wasn't science fiction. One. All engine running. America accomplished the impossible. Apollo 11 was about arriving at a strange place out in space. And it was uh, kind of a strange time. The NASA program seemed to be pulling the country together. They had volunteered for what could be a death mission. All the astronauts knew it. Eagle, Houston, here, go for landing. I'm doing a thing, go for landing. It was incredibly scary, incredibly dangerous. I heard Neil as he stepped on the surface just say that was one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. I, Richard Bilhouse Nixon, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. The inauguration of Richard Nixon in 1969 solidified the fact that there was a deep sea change in American politics. We had been living through a lot of acrimony the previous year. Bobby Kennedy killed and Martin Luther King, mayhem in Chicago, and we're hungering for an American moonshot that pulls us all together. As we explore the reaches of space, let us go to the new worlds together. Neil, Buzz, and I were uh, informed we would be attempting the first lunar landing. Great honor to be selected for any mission in the Apollo program, this one, of course, in, in particular. The hype was mostly around the astronauts at that time. They were everywhere. We've thought of astronauts as typically male, typically white men. And so you'll notice that there are just simply not a lot of women in the room. Get in the seat faster. This is James Adams, bought handy wipes for dusting. Women were expected to stay home, take care of the kids, clean the house. I'm not saying I do that. My name is Margaret Hamilton, and in 1969, I was building onboard flight software for Apollo missions. Margaret Hamilton literally wrote the code that made the lunar landing possible. And we didn't really know about these women at the time. At first, I was the only woman that was hired to do onboard flight software. This guy that I worked with, when I first got there, he said, how can you leave your daughter at home? And I just said to him, you do what's right for you, and I'll do what's right for me. The software had to be perfect. A person's life was at stake, meaning the astronauts. It is July 16th, 1969. The drama of watching the Apollo 11 in the summer of 69 is, can they do it? Ignition sequence start. Four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Two, one, liftoff. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Do solemnly swear. Tower clear. You watch this huge vehicle just lift off effortlessly from the launch pad. The vibration that you felt from three miles away, it was this tremendous. There's all kinds of little sideways jigs and jags, and you were knocked back and forth with spastic little motions. Apollo 11, it's really an eight, eight and a half day event. People wanted to know every aspect of the mission. The astronauts sent back to Earth a 35-minute color television show of the sights from 150,000 miles away. The astronauts were the ones on the news, and they were all white. You know, if they went up, then they became heroes. But nobody seemed to know that this was not just white folks doing the work either. My name is Christine Darden, and in 1969, I was in the computer section in the re-entry physics branch of the high-speed aerodynamics division. That was what they called a computer. The work was to take a Monroe or a Frieden calculator and do the big equations, which could be a page long. I'm Joylette Heilig. I'm the daughter of Katherine Johnson. She's, she's the real deal. My name is Katherine Johnson. Johnson. 
Mama got there at 53. The engineers came and asked for some specific skills. The supervisor said, oh, well, that's Catherine. Catherine was a leader in her area. She paved the way. She made enormous contributions to calculations and the trajectory for the uh, Apollo program. What happened if somebody questioned your work? Tough. Nobody seemed to know that there were women at NASA. The difficulties that they went through socially and the fact that NASA had them operating, I think, was a, a breakthrough back in those days. Everybody was looking at the television. Mama said, ooh, I hope he does what we told him to do. Because if they did what they told him to do, it would be successful. Tension started filling up the room. Pretty feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. Picking up some dust. We're there. We've got an engine blowing dust off the moon. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The angle has landed. My gosh, this is really happening. 500 million people watching Apollo 11. Now step off the land now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was the first time man walked on the moon and the first time software ran on the moon. There you go. Beautiful view. Is that something? And you can catch the new six-part docuseries, 1969, premiering tomorrow night at 10, 9 central, right here on ABC. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.